I'm on a quest to have a second healthy baby. And that means I'm not putting any toxins, any fragrances in my body. And that's where Caraway Home Cookware and their Tupperware come into play. Right now, when you use my code TSFS at CarawayHome.com, you get 10% off. I'm sure you're like, Sarah, what are you talking about? Well, Caraway products are non-toxic. That means they have no PFAs, PTFEs, those forever chemicals that are extremely hard to pronounce. And I just ordered their storage containers in Navy. Oh, and hello, they don't have any toxic chemicals either. Don't believe me? Go and read their five-star reviews. Over 65,000 people have rated them five stars. Visit CarawayHome.com slash TSFS to take advantage of this limited time offer for 10% off your next purchase. This deal is exclusive to Sarah Fraser Show listeners, so support my show and visit carawayhome.com slash TSFS or use code TSFS at checkout. Caraway, non-toxic cookware made modern. Does Nutrafol actually work? It's the number one question I get when I talk about Nutrafol, the number one hair growth supplement. Yes, it works. They wouldn't be going on nearly three years of advertising with the Sarah Fraser Show if you guys weren't buying and coming back month after month. Take the first step to get visibly thicker, healthier hair right now for a limited time. Nutrafol is offering my listeners $10 off your first month's subscription and free shipping when you go to Nutrafol.com and you enter the promo code TSFS. Find out why over 4,500 healthcare professionals and hairstylists recommend Nutrafol for healthier hair. Nutrafol.com, that's spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com with the promo code TSFS. Nutrafol, you want to use that promo code TSFS because it's the number one dermatologist recommended hair growth supplement. I love it. You see results in one to three months. I've been using it for years. Help my postpartum hair grow longer. Go to Nutrafol.com today and use the promo code TSFS. Lemonade, oh you have seen her. How many of your interviews do you think your pop culture interviews have gone viral from Leah's Lemonade? I don't know. Uh, maybe five or more. Maybe five or more. Oh, easily. Um, easily. What was the last one that went super viral for you that was like picked up in Yahoo.com that was everywhere? Um, well, the last one that was pretty viral for me was when I interviewed Bambi from Love and Hip Hop. That was the last one that kind of caught the blogs. Um, probably the last one that was like everywhere, everywhere was the CBJ one for sure. Yes. Okay. Well, she is, I love you. You are like one of my go-to pop culture people. You are so good with the interviews. You and I bonded because we love the shade, honey, the shade, the <laughs> dirt, the messiness. And we love to call each other and talk shit. Okay. So this is like <laughs> my girl. My girl, we talk a lot of shit. Um, but you and I also love Thousand Pound Sisters. And love. you're a Thousand Pound Sisters expert like I am. And I, you know, this, I don't know, how many months have we been building up to this quote unquote epic fight yeah. that supposedly mm -hmm. was so bad and I want your theory on this, was so bad that production shut down for two weeks while they weren't in Florida. And this fight was being billed that Chris was involved, who, of course, is the brother to Tammy and Amy Slayton. And they were involved and Amanda and Misty. So, all right, Leah, what did you think of last night's, you know, and by the way, next week is the season finale where we find uh -huh. out that Caleb has passed. So, yeah. All right, first, let's talk this fight and this latest episode. What'd you think? Yeah, it was a little anticlimactic once once you watched it. I mean, they did a great job teasing it. I mean, the tease made me think, I, this is about to go crazy. I was like, <laughs> sitting in anticipation, I was like, can't miss it. Uh, my mom is here visiting me, and she thinks I'm crazy as hell. Every time it comes on, I'm like, it's a thousand pound sister time. Let's get to it. But I genuinely was a little disappointed by the fight. I mean, I did... It was interesting to watch Amy kind of lose it because that's not really her temperament. It's never been since they were on uh, My 600 Pound Life then to the transition of A Thousand Pound Sisters. 
She was never, that was never her temperament. So I think it's very clear regardless that she's in a space that is not quite herself after this separation and I guess trying to be a single mother, but baby, she was fucking Amanda up. I was like, oh, okay, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. Listen, I grew up on the Bad Girls Club. I wanted to see a little bit more, you know? Me too. But wait, do we think they edited out do we think they edited it like that maybe it did get so bad? Because I, the reason I say that is because the tease for the season finale is like Amanda uh, is Amy like breaking down. I can't believe I did this to her. And I'm like, OK, yeah, you like grabbed her shirt, like ripped her shirt a bit. But it from what we saw. Right. But it didn't seem right. like it was that epic so i'm like are we getting an edit because i'm just trying to think of why they would edit it like maybe i don't know maybe i'm just making this up but you know what i mean i'm like that was that was like not what i thought it was going to be at all yeah i genuinely thought her and amanda were going to fight like genuinely like her hitting amanda and amanda going don't put your hands on me tammy don't do it i'll fuck you up and like that okay like, I don't know. I was expecting a little bit more violence. So I don't know. I, I think it was just a little, but you know, maybe because I also think too, when you sign up for these reality shows, you, you feel like, you know what you're getting into, but you really don't like, I think, you know, when something like that happens and your whole family's like BS is on front street, there probably was a conversation behind closed doors. Cause I now granted, I, I don't think that Amy, Amy and Tammy might be the smartest uh, colors in the box, you know what I mean? The brightest colors in the box. But I would hope that they are getting some type of producer credit or something. So I would imagine that maybe they are, you know, behind the scenes, maybe making a little bit of, um, hey, let's let's cut this part out. Or, hey, let's, let's not show the extent. Let's not do ABC. Or they just hooked us in by saying that, one or the other. I know. It's really hard to tell. I mean, it was just, I don't know. It, like, and Amanda at one point, like, looked at, like, directly at the cameras. And I was like... Okay, is she going to throw a fit and doesn't want this full fight in there? The This is my other theory. And you've obviously dealt with a lot of reality stars. But Amy is in the midst of a messy divorce with Michael, who we all hate now. You know? Yes. So a lot of people are like, is this season going to be used against Amy in court? And then therefore, could this fight have been edited down in mm-hmm. a way to protect Amy from, you know, I mean – losing those boys potential not that I don't think she would but could Oh, if you listen to Michael talk, which he barely did throughout his whole tenure on this fucking show. I mean, if you listen to him talk, he he don't got the sense the good Lord gave anybody. So I'm like, shit, who are the kids better with? You know, a reality star that might have had a breakdown or a man who allegedly is getting left because he played video games. I, you know, he looks like an honest working blue collar man to me. I, I would have thought he was a plumber or maybe like a HVAC guy or something. But his ass sitting at home playing video games. I'm like, girl, you're an idiot. You're on a reality show and this man's only check is his contribution to your reality show Uh, he's making five dollars on twitch he is twitching and he's apparently he was making ten dollars and he was sitting there for five hours straight while she was doing everything i kind of wonder i don't know i i tend to believe the sun is the publication which i mean the sun is like trash but whatever but you know they do usually have these insiders that they pay money to so i feel like the fight was more epic than it was and they were probably like i feel like they threw amy a bone and like so she would they can't use it against her in court well i mean let's let's be clear though i think that you know it takes away from her storyline maybe if she doesn't she's not doing this single mother plight and, you know, I don't know, maybe they're just thinking like three seasons ahead because um, I don't think these people are ever getting off TV personally because, I mean, what would they be doing otherwise? I think you're right. Um, what was your overall take of season five so far? Like, what have you thought of the season? Um, I, I've liked this season because I think that um, it's a different dynamic. I think we're seeing a little bit more. I think, you know, usually it's just like everybody's trying to lose weight. Everybody, I'm fat, bitch. Let me lose weight. Like this season, now I'm doing my country accent. This season, I feel like we really got more in depth of who they are as people. We got to see development. I personally really like Amanda. Amanda, yeah. their sister to me, is like the the glue and the common sense to the family. She's a little rough around the edges. Don't, don't piss her off. But I feel like she is definitely the glue to the family. So I like her her and the other sisters being more involved. I like seeing their full family dynamic because it gives you a better idea of like 
who these two people we kind of plucked from this reality show gave them their own start and now we see the full totality even when the mom comes and you hear what the mom says and you know tammy talks about how her mom never thought she would ever lose weight or never thought she'd be able to have surgery or hell they even thought she wouldn't even live this long so i think it, it gives them more depth for sure i enjoy seeing the uh more advanced part of them rather than them sitting and eating a bunch of food and going bitch we need to lose weight you know what i mean we could do that every season if that's the case no Hell, you're, i like I it that's a really good take i really like that because i i felt like tammy is not you know the tammy that tammy's usually a real bitch and you know she's yeah. real sassy we get these yeah. great epic one-liners you know like try mm-hmm. being my size amy you know i mean <laughs> that yeah. that was like and now, we haven't gotten right there, that what i think i got the the most comedic line from any of the seasons when the bitch said she was craving water because she thought she was pregnant now that alone took me out clean out i was like you know what (laughs) wrap this shit up because this can't be healthy for me i must be gaining weight as i'm watching this show because this bitch said she was craving water okay water Sarah, I take this all back. And and she goes, and the woman was like, I mean, you could tell this OBGYN was like, oh, fuck. And the the OBGYN's like, okay, you've had an IUD in for 16 years. I mean, do you know how, like, that thing must have been growing cobwebs and every other fucking thing up there. 16 years, she never had it changed out. And then she goes, oh, I think I could be pregnant because I'm craving water. (laughs) You're right, you're right. And that OBGYN was like, you could tell she was thinking to herself, I did eight years of fucking medical school. I'm a half a million dollars in debt to tell this bitch that she's just dehydrated. And, and no, it killed me because that's that's Amy, the next slide. Bitch, you ain't pregnant. You just want some fucking water. You're dehydrated. I'm like, yo, they are, <laughs> they are reality good. bold. They are so good. They are so good. You're right. You're right. Okay, we're back. We're back. It is an epic season. It's an epic season. Yeah. I agree with you. We're getting a lot more depth. It is so hard for Amy. Wait, now, did you feel, I also felt like, I don't feel like the family is sympathetic to Amy at all. Do you? Okay, Sarah. So this is why I'm glad we're having this conversation because you know, I'm childless. You are a mother. And I think that you probably relate to an Amy plight more than her. Not that you've been a single mother, but more so. I think that moms and we see it on the internet now moms more talking about like raising kids and kind of having to just you know kids want their mom when they're upset they don't they don't call their dad they want their mom like there's just a a sentimental connection with children and their mothers that we cannot not pay attention to but i think i'm looking at it from a single person point of view and i'm just like and maybe because i had a single mother maybe it's just for me i just have no fucking sympathy i'm like amy get your fucking ass together and don't get me wrong it's hard it's hard when you have kids with someone and you think you're going to be with them and you think you're going to have help. But hell, from what it sounds like, you've been a single mom, bitch. The only difference is y'all don't live together. That's so, right. Yeah, that's true. He's not playing video I, games in front of you. Yeah. I, I You know, I just, I, I'm struggling to um, all the way empathize with her. I do see, I because I am the person at the restaurant when the kids are crying. I'm like, shut your fucking kid up. But I also know wait, that like, you, wait. you know, being a mom is difficult. And like, you know, you have two young kids like under two that are crazy and yelling and it it could be overwhelming. But I also think, too, she's so busy thinking she's being criticized and judged that she's not open to um, fair criticism, which is when they were like last night, don't feed the kid on the on the rental couch. Your kid's going to fuck up the rental couch. But what does she do? Go over there and feed the kid on the rental couch. It's just like. You know, I don't know. And then I also think, you know, Amy's not all the way there. So I think there's like several <laughs> factors to, you know, why it's playing out the way it's playing out. But I, I struggle a little because I'm just like, girl, I'm like with well, Chris, you you put your big girl panties on and be a fucking mom. Like you, you just, that's what you, you chose. You packed up your shit. Like I'm leaving. That's your, that's the, her line this season. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm about to go at the restaurant. I'm leaving at the house. I'm leaving at the rental. I'm leaving. So leaving is your thing, bitch. So when you leave, that is a choice. Okay. If you wanted to be with your shitty husband and stay and still be a single parent, you could have did that, but you were leaving. Remember? So now that you've left, you have to deal with the consequences of what leaving means. And so I just think that, you know, not to say that leaving is not hard, but it's also not an excuse 
Who's bought a set of designer sunglasses only to lose them like two months later? Oh my God, story of my life. Prada is 400 bucks gone and uh, sick to my stomach. I never buy expensive sunglasses ever since then. And that's why I've partnered with Gooder. Gooder's an amazing company. 100% polarized glasses, just $25. When you visit gooder.com slash TSFS and you use the code TSFS, you are getting free shipping. These sunglasses are adorable. You're going to be seeing me wearing them all over social media because they are a brand new partner to the Sarah Fraser show. One year warranty, 30 day free returns, baby, and 100% satisfaction guaranteed. If you want to support TSFS and pick up a pair of Gooder, they are giving the Sarah Fraser Show listeners free shipping on your first order. You can go to gooder.com slash TSFS and use code TSFS to get free shipping. Gooder offers 30-day money-back guarantee and 100% satisfaction. Find your pair at gooder.com slash TSFS and use code TSFS to get free shipping. There's a Leah Henry read. Okay. Wow. See, now I, I felt the opposite. I feel like they're kind of picking on her. You know, I mean, she's sitting there. She's trying to like shove food in her mouth because the kids like won't go to sleep. Then she burps and they go, oh, you're burping in that kid's face. It's like, okay, give her a minute. She's trying to like hold this child. And none of them, I mean, Tammy seems to help the kids a little bit, which by the way, when they yeah. were on that boat ride and Tammy was holding one of the boys, I was like, can somebody like, can someone go over here and grab I me? Mean, <laughs> right. I mean, I'm sorry, but you know, if they hit a bump, like I wouldn't really rely on Tammy to hold on to the baby. Right. Aaron, shut up. Oh my God. <laughs> I mean, did anyone else watch that scene? I was like, get the way, get the baby out of Tammy's fucking hands. The boat's like going, I don't know how many miles per hour. They're out in the middle of nowhere. The no life jacket on the kid. I'm like, how are we leaving this child in charge, like oh, with Tammy? None, oh, of them seem to, none of them seem to like grab the kids, you know. Glenn and the boys. It's like I feel like they pick on her so bad this season. They they don't even give her a hug and are like, "You're doing a good job, Mama." But it's so funny, you're right, because the way you feel is how I would completely have felt until I have a kid, and then yeah. now. I've been at that restaurant where they're inconsolable. They're so, and everybody's looking at you and you're just like so hungry and you're tired and you're like, oh, please, I just want to eat. And the kid's like melting down. You got to pack everything up and, oh, it's, so now I, now I completely can relate to a mama, but I kind of feel that they're, they really like put a lot of shit, I think, on her shoulders. And I mean, by the way, she's like, they all have, but she really helped Tammy. They all helped Tammy so much to even get Tammy to live. Like Tammy ought to be fucking up off her ass and like helping those kids all the time. Right. I mean, I also also think they switched roles usually. And they said that they kind of hinted towards that in the show. Like, you know, usually Tammy was the bitch and Amy is, you know, Um, but you know, what's interesting too, from an editing standpoint that I just thought about what sent Amy over the edge was Tammy kind of coming at her. But they didn't show the leading up interaction because how does it then come from Tammy was assisting her with the baby? Because really, Tammy was the one who got aggressive first. If you remember, she walked up and was like, Amy, I'm done with your shit. And that's when Amy lost it. Yeah. And Amy said, I told you I was about to lose it. So there was some buildup between them before that even happened. Yeah. I'm curious to know what that led to. I know she was kind of getting frustrated at the table when the burp and they burped, she burped in the kids' faces and they were like, don't do that. Um, but also too, here's the thing. I come from a family very similar to this, meaning that my family's very blunt. Um, they don't give a fuck about how you feel about anything. <laughs> They'll say whatever they want to say, how they want to say, which is why I'm like very blunt. But I, I also can empathize with that because when you do grow up in a family like that, the expectation is everything is going to be very raw, cut and to the point. But when you're not feeling that shit and someone is raw, it's like, bitch, give me a motherfucking second to gather myself and then like, let, let's go for there so i've i've been in situations with my family where it's just like enough you know what i mean so i do i do see the uh how the dynamics were at play there but amy been like this the whole season if it'd be different if this was just one thing and it silently led up to this big blowout but girls been boohooing and crying since episode one well, a lot of people agree with you. And most of the time, people never agree with me. So I'm used to it. So I'm sure people are going to be like, no, they don't get like, I don't care. Um, but what do you, all right. So has it been interesting for you to watch? The other thing that's so hard for me to watch is Caleb, like knowing that he passes away. Is, is anyone else, like, I get so sad. He seems so sweet. And I'm like, 
oh my God, can we send a camera up there more? Like, what was he going through the last year of his life? And to this day, supposedly, we don't really know the cause of death. Like, it's never been revealed. I don't know. Is that hard for you to watch? I'm so, like, kind of, almost I have this weird anxiety about seeing the final episode. I think they're definitely foreshadowing the death if you're paying attention. Cause I, I'm watching the uh, selective clips they're picking. I want you to like notice the fact that, you know, Tammy keeps saying, I feel like I'm living my life without you. I feel like it's unfair. I feel like, you know, we're married and I'm at the beach and you're supposed to be here. She keeps, it's almost like the, they're foreshadowing that Tammy's gonna go on and live without him, right? Um, because when I was watching it, honestly, I forgot he died. So I had to Google it and I was like, oh shit. Okay, now I remember he did die. Yeah. So I'm like, we're showing a lot of him for us to conclude that he doesn't make it. And so, you know, I think they really wanted to give us a totality idea of, what's to come and then also the dynamic between Tammy and Kayla because I remember before they started shooting and when Tammy married him and it was all over you know the things you know Tammy used to be in and out of uh, negative relationships on this show we've seen her fair share of men who were just fetishizing her or you know people using her or whatever for the moment and I think that you know when this news broke that she married Caleb, that was the first thought. I was like, oh, Lord, she went to his rehab, just found somebody, and th- there we go. Yeah. But then when you watch the season and you watch their interactions and their engagements, you can really tell they were in that thing together. They were in that. They were friends. They were confidants. And Tammy was in there a long time. And then when on the, the teaser, they show that all of the family was at the wedding. I think that was, that was indicative of her relationship with him because when Tammy had dated people they didn't care for, they were very, very loud and not supportive of it. So I think for them to like stand behind her on her wedding day and support her, that is a testament to what Caleb was to Tammy. And so I think this is going to be really, really hard to watch. Well, and I think to me, the thing that Caleb is, about Caleb that I love, at least on camera, is he really seems to treat her the way she deserves to be treated. Like, he's always like, oh, my God, I love you so much. You're beautiful. Here's a flower. I got some, you know, he's joking with it. It's the way I think you want to see anybody be with someone because he seems like he's crazy about her. And, you know, he apparently strategically got into that rehab center because he found out she was there and married her. Did you know this? Yeah, this is like oh, a whole... Oh, now, now that's a little interesting. No, I did not know that shit. <laughs> that, I don't know. Okay. God rest his soul, but... <laughs> this, is, this is an ongoing theme, by the way, for TLC shows. So Sister Wives, it came out that, you know, Christine Brown got married to David Woolley. David Woolley's daughter... The minute that Christine Brown announced she was single, called him to make a profile to specifically see if he could date Christine. He did. He knew who she was before. Okay, so that's one. Now Mary Brown has a guy who allegedly went after her specifically because he knew she was on the show and he tried to come out here to Orange County and date a housewife. When that didn't work, now he's in love with Mary Brown. Okay, now then Caleb found out that Tam. he always felt that he had a connection with Tammy Slayton. Found out she was at that rehab center and specifically lobbied to get himself in, got himself in, and then married her within a couple months. It's a theme for TLC people. That's fucking insane. Like, if I found that out, I would literally be like, I'm Leah's done. face is like, Leah, <laughs> I'm shocked. I did not know that. You're, you're like, you, you're speechless. You seem like completely <laughs> shocked. I'm blindsided because what? That's a little fucking much. Do you feel like that's manifesting or do you think it's stalker? Stalker. You do. Don't it's a you? Little, yeah, you do. It's you a do. little too premeditated. I get putting yourself in the situation to get something you want. Um, but it's like, I watch you on a TV show and then I plot to be around you. That's Monica, Monica Garcia from fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Old yeah. Lake City. I, by the way, love her, Sarah. Love her. Me I don't too. know if you've been watching. Oh, oh. I, I don't, I'm not going to watch next season without her. Like, I'm sorry. She made the entire season. Are you going to watch uh, next season of Salt Lake? 
Yeah, because I, I am the girl who's like, I don't want to talk shit till I figure it out. But I mean, it's going to be stuffy. It's going to be stuffy. It's going to be a little too, like Monica gave it flair. Like, I loved it. She came out. She's like, listen, I slept with my brother-in-law. I'm a whore. I've been excommunicated. I don't care. You know, let's have sex, Heather. Is your daughter fucking everyone? Like, Monica didn't give a damn. I loved that about her. Me too. And I think shook the cast up. Uh, the realest moment, because I think half these women don't have half the money they say that they have. And I... I loved the moment where she just sat there and started crying. She's like, I bought a Louis Vuitton bag to fit in. I'm like, I feel like so many of us could relate to that. I just like loved it. I no, I, uh, I don't even really want to think about it. Cause I don't want to watch next season. I can't stand those women without now. I hate Heather gay. I'm so like, I used to like Heather. Now I can't stand her. I did too. And you know, okay. The last two seasons have made me fluctuate, but I really used to like Whitney. I felt like she was kind of the shakeup of the show when she first got on very free flat, like hippie girl. Like I'm with my, you know, affair. Like I thought Whitney was kind of it, but now I feel like Whitney drags mess. I'm like, Whitney, shut the fuck up. It's, it's always like, oh, you made me feel my own trauma. Like girl, stop. I did enjoy Mary Cosby coming back, but to their point, uh, she is a little bit of a bully. Yeah, she is. <laughs> well, I just think Mary doesn't really want to be there. I feel like when Mary oh. told Andy, I'm just doing this as a favor to you, I feel like I feel like she feels that way. Like she doesn't have any well, I interest. Think, I think that is true, but I don't know if you saw she did a, a podcast interview where um, you know, they talked about like Mary, why were you not in more of the season? Like I don't know if you noticed there was like a point where she just stopped being in all the scenes and she was like Produ production iced me out and I was like I don't know if that's for two things one because you were showing such disinterest at the things they had you at or if this was like you know some other agenda but I also think you know when you're on a show about friends which none of these people are really friends but right. when you have a show about a friend group and you always sit outside in the sprinter <laughs> or don't participate it kind of you know it's like bitch you're collecting probably like a ten thousand dollar check every episode get your ass back we could we could use other someone else who's more eager to be involved for sure <sighs> I know. I hope if Mary comes back, she comes back. She's full shade. I want to know more about the son. I want to see, you know, the, what is it? The grandfather that's now her husband or whatever. I want to see the step grandfather that's now her husband, yeah. whatever. I want yeah. to see him again. Yeah. If she's going to come back, I, I think they need her to come back without Monica, to be honest. Yeah. No, they need, they need the flair, but I think if Mary has any common sense, she will charge them a lot of money to do so because I think to your point, she's really not that interested. I think she, you know, she's very rich without the show. She clearly has prominence and influence in that area and in the church community. Um, and, you know, I think it's fun for her, but it's not like her end all be all. Like some of these people need this. Like to me, a Meredith Marks needs this. Yes. Lisa Barlow needs this. Lisa needs it for her fucking ego. But also, I'm very tired of uh, Lisa. Also, did you see recently that they found her endorsing Trump? Uh, they found oh, her. Really? Uh, no. Her I mean, that doesn't really shock me, does it? I mean, yeah, she's, super, she's super rich. Yeah. yeah. And, but, and she's super into the more. Well, I don't know how Mormon she is or not. But, you know, she says she's very more, very religious, you know. Right. Um, right. So. Mm -hmm. But wait, mm -hmm. wait, you didn't answer. You didn't finish. Do you like Heather Gay now or not? I'm indifferent. I liked what she used to bring. I think she used to be comedic fun. I think she, you know, the good Mormon thing. But this year she got stuffy. Like when Monica asked a sex question about her daughter. Now, granted, she, I, do I think it's appropriate to ask people about kids and sex? Probably not. But Heather being so like, <gasps> when you literally act like you're, the slut of the group every other day or like when she was arguing about Monica with who was more single. It's like Heather, oh, bitch, who gives a fuck? Like, I don't know. Some of the things that she persists on this season to me is really dumb. But I also think the double standard is at play because, you know, that story, put, that deflection of Jen Shaw and this stupid black eye and going on a book tour and lying and then almost producers losing their job because she would, she is so full of shit. She is but Monica. Gotta go. I know, but Monica has to go. Like you're gonna, like you would trust Heather Gay, and I don't even know if I believe Heather Gay is telling the truth. I think she's such a liar. Who would buy her book? You're a complete liar. You've been lying for two years. I'm like, what credibility do you have? And I mean, did they ever? Oh, we're afraid of Jen. We're afraid of Jen. Okay, 
get to the bottom. Why are you afraid? She's a narcissist that you know she has a ton of burn accounts and she'd harass your friend. Like, what is it that's so bad about Jen? I, I think, honest, I think it's a, a couple things. I think one, Jen was crazy as fuck. Like her temper, yeah. her temperament. I think to like rich elitist white women, it was a little threatening. Um, I think that also um, they all knew. I mean, think of the first couple seasons of Salt Lake City. Remember, there was always this kind of question about what does Jen really do? I think all them bitches knew that something was there was something in the water. I agree. So, I agree. on top of this, there's this hyper aggressive, loud ass, bully ass, narcissist bitch who you know who you probably already really knew the T what she was doing and what kind of shit she was into. And then on top of that, that's a liability not only to this show because if everybody finds out you're in cahoots and the whole show's gone, but then on top of that, then you know, you're dealing with a fucking criminal. So I think there was several reasons for them to be scared. I wouldn't have been scared of Jen because all she do is yell. She ain't gonna pop me. Well, I don't know. She punched the other so fuck. Actually, maybe she would. <laughs> she, might, she might. She might. Wait, she I have one last question for you because I think we've wrapped up our thousand pound sisters predictions. You obviously think this show, they're getting endless seasons. They're meant for reality TV. Uh, the, the finale is this coming week. I mean, we're going to see the passing of Caleb. He he passes away. Tammy, they, they did the um, teaser. Tammy gets the phone call. Chris is like, I don't even know if she's going to be okay. Then they show them at the funeral. I mean... For, uh, so, okay, I think we we, we feel like we're going to get another season very soon of Thousand Pound Sisters. You and I are big fans. Um, but I wanted to then switch gears and ask you, what are you hearing about RHOA? Like, you're a little bit of an insider girl. Do you hear anything in Atlanta about, according to Candy Burris, who I love, nobody's been given contracts, no one's filming. What do you think yeah. is going to happen there? Word on the social media streets is they are going to try to bring back Nene and Portia. That's what I've heard. Really? Rumbling stuff. They said that Nene followed Bravo back on social media. Um, you know, Portia, she's been in and out of like, um, you know, some of their little spinoffs on Peacock, like the girls trip stuff. And I mean, I don't think Portia needs it. She married a really rich man. So I think Portia is like living her best life being married to the rich. But I also think that Portia knows she can grab the network by the nuts if she wants to, to have a return. Um, I think another question and another conversation to be had is, is if they haven't given Candy a contract and they have Phaedra back on Married to Medicine. You know, people have been screaming for Phaedra to come back what is it to just knock her back over and tell Candy to this season out because Candy has always said she wouldn't film with Phaedra ever again so I'm I'm curious I do think they should bring Drew back um I'm a little biased because that's my girl but I'm also a little I also think that the drama with her husband is just too fucking good for us not to see how it plays yeah, out yeah like, yeah yeah that was really good I mean, it's so toxic it's so toxic she's the only one with the <laughs> actual storyline that you know that just is too good to not conclude but you know that's what i've been hearing some of the ogs are coming back i mean i you know i love candy but i'm ready for her to go i think candy and todd are another they give me mary cosby it's like i don't think they really they're there because they know it's good promotion but i think they have their own successful production companies music the kids now model it's like okay you guys really aren't i don't think they're giving us really their like full lives anymore and they probably don't have the drop they probably they probably have a really healthy marriage so there's probably not a lot of drama yeah i just think candy's i don't know i think her time she's awesome she's amazing and such a great businesswoman but i just i think we could do without her yeah it's, it's not as much going on that it's so salacious with her she just kind of adds to it but i think <clears throat> There's yeah. something to be said about a shakeup when Candy has to be the center point of drama. I feel like last season she was like really trying to defend herself. And it was just like, this is not Candy's role in this type of ensemble. It just felt forced a little bit. Um, and the storylines fell flat. Again, the only thing I cared about at the end of the season was Ralph and Drew. That was the highlight of that yeah. reunion. Like, what, her singing what'd she him. say? Like, <laughs> when she serenaded him and Ralph was like, oh my God. That was so good. Oh, my God. It was yeah. so good. Yeah, that um, was it. That was all we had. All right, Leah, you got to come back more often. We love you. You are amazing. You're great to follow on social media. Where can people follow you? Where can they listen to you? Because I'm assuming, too, we can stream your radio show online. Tell us. Yes, you can follow me at Leah A. Henry, L-E-A-H-A Henry, H-E-N-R-Y. Um, I am on Power 107.5, That's 10A to 3P on um, – you can get the little the app. You on can look at Columbus, Ohio, baby. She's so good. 
And then also I have my um, new travel brand that I am starting. It's called Plus Paradise. Oh. So it's a body positive travel group. So we're going to Jamaica in December, but it's for everybody. Really, Sarah, you know this more than anybody. I think when you are plus size, traveling can be anxiety filled, right? It can be like super thousand pound sisters. Like you saw in real life last episode, Tammy struggling to leave, struggling to want to do anything, the constant thoughts. And oftentimes when you're in like these socialization settings, people don't think about you as a plus size friend. You go out with your friends are all skinny, you're fat, and then they want to go zip lining and you don't fit on the harness. Now what? It's embarrassing, right? Yeah. So I just decided to create a group uh, where we take that thought and that hassle out of people's minds so they can enjoy the trip and just know like when I'm putting my money down, these people are thinking of my interest as a plus size person. And then it's just body positive. Leah, I think this is going to be so great for you. I think this is such a great brand. I really do. This is going to be really, this will be, I think, super successful because I think so many women want it. Yes, you know, I've shared obviously my body struggle for years and, you know, yeah, I mean, I think it's awesome to be empowered and be with other women that, you know, just want to be free and feel inclusive. And you just did a huge trip. You were in, where, you, where did you go? You went uh -huh. to Africa? Yeah, I was in Ghana. Yep. You were in Ghana. And we, and you talked about this, right? Because you went to different areas where what some people were body like inclusive right and then sometimes you felt like they weren't well not in ghana no in ghana honey i was a snack let me tell you something the men was like hello sista sista impress impress i was like yes honey yes honey ghana was different but i i have been other places and i definitely think that you know there's just you don't understand it unless you're plus size, but I just think that traveling goes with, has a lot of anxiety and it shouldn't be that way. Like you should be able to have luxury, nice experiences and also like have a good time without feeling ostracized for sure. But no, in Africa, girl, the big people's is a snack, Sonny. I was, I was, a, you know, I was a, a dessert and entree and an appetizer. <laughs> then. Okay. <laughs> They loved you. <gasps> okay, well, hopefully we'll also be seeing you on 90 Day Fiance. You would be so good. Please get a guy and man and you could be on 90 Day. Oh, I, he would take such good care of you. He'd want to come here to the he want to come here to the US. Oh my god. He'd be loving I you. I would love to be on 90 Day Fiance, but all my friends are like, "Girl, we will disown you." And I'm like, "I think are they it crazy? would be so Why? You'd be so good." I no, I think I would be great. Did I, okay, yes. I never told anybody this there. Every time I come on your podcast, I tell people shit I never <laughs> yes. say out loud. Good. Um, I actually auditioned for a dating reality show. It was for Hulu, um, but it never got greenlit. It was supposed to be new of its kind, and then they didn't. And so we never heard anything. Nothing happened. But the casting director told me, like, she was putting a 10 on my audition. Like, she was like, we will push you through when the show, like, you will probably make it to LA to come do the in-person audition. You are so good for reality TV because that the way you were raised in your family, I mean, you just cut to the chase, you say shit, you know, I love it. Like, yeah. I, like I said, at the start of this, one of my favorite things to do is get a phone call from you. I mean, we just dig in, we talk <laughs> shit. I mean, you're so good at it. You'd be so good on reality TV. You know how it works. You're gorgeous. Oh my God, I want to see you on 90 Day so bad. Oh, you'd have those yeah. foreign men all over. Oh, and I hope you're like dating two of them. I mean, just like get, <laughs> you know, in a side. Peace too. <laughs> a, little, a little snack on the side. Yes. Too. That's what I deserve. All right, keep me posted. I want you on a reality show. You're amazing. Love you, my friend. Thank you for jumping on. See you soon. Bye, Leah.